If you work at Marvel, and maybe if you work at DC, you might be asking yourself, am I in danger? Am I in danger of losing my job? Am I in danger of, of my work drying up? You know, what do I do? I know some people are worried about this, and I want to speak kind of specifically to you. Uh, what, you know, how, how can you tell, are you in danger or not? And what you should do to try and protect yourself a little bit. And I think some of this advice may be helpful for everybody, just wherever they are and kind of how to think about their careers and maybe how to align in this new world. Um, I'm going to say a lot of things that are my opinion. I guarantee you lots of people disagree, and especially a lot of people from the industry will disagree. But I'm going to try and explain a little bit why I think the way I think. Hey everybody, this is Perch. Um, I uh, I want to give some advice to some people who, you know, some of which have asked for it, some of which haven't, and I hope it's helpful um, about how to kind of orient yourself in this new world and where should you be careful? Where should you be worried about where things are going and, and where should you be proactive about where things are going? Um, I have the benefit um, of having worked uh, on some relation with both AT&T and with Disney. And I know a bit about how their corporate uh, world operates and, and kind of how they do things. And I think the biggest kind of thing that you have to understand is that these corporations, like many large corporations, move slow but methodically. And those are kind of the same thing, slow but methodically. But basically, when something gets in motion, it may take a long time for it to reach its destination point, but it also means that it's very unlikely that it's going to change course. Once it commits to something, it kind of commits to two to three years. Their actions and their their motions may feel very sudden to you. But if it does, then you may just be looking at things wrong and you need to look further upstream because you can usually see these motions, these, these events coming a mile in advance because of how slow they move. So as I made this point before, DC, while it's a shock to several people, if you've just been following along with the thread with AT&T and the acquisition and kind of the statements that are being made to Warner Media and the video uh, being removed, and, and just you could you could see all of this coming a mile away. In fact, in many ways, I think DC has done comic industry a bit of a kindness. I know that's going to be fiercely argued about by a lot of people, but they've moved relatively quickly for them and not strung things along. I think Marvel, uh, it's three years from now, I suspect we're going to be looking back at this and going, Marvel was a lot more cruel in how they slowly bled out a lot of these positions and, and these, these moves, because it's coming there as well. Disney is losing a lot of money. Disney is changing the way they do business. And so the writing is all on the wall. They're in the same exact progress. It's just coming at a different pace. If you are somebody who has worked in comics and been heavily reliant on a buddy getting you work, meaning you don't really have a name for yourself, you don't really have sales numbers to put behind yourself, and you've been relying on a network, then now is the time to really prove that you can stand on your own feet. Make sure that you have your own portfolio, your own pitch decks, your own uh, ideas in the, in the hopper for a number of different characters that are not pigeonholed into one style. That's going to kill you over time. These companies are going to need people who are versatile. They're going to need people who are self-motivated, and they're definitely going to eschew any kind of uh, network-related hiring. That that is a reality of what's coming. Now, that that you know, still who you know uh, counts, and you can you can be on the right side of, of, of history, if you will. You can be on the right side of politics and have people that can help get you in. But it's going to become a lot more. It's going to be a lot harder over time. If you have produced a comic in the last three years that had good sales, that put up good numbers, that had a good crossover audience, that um, was able to succeed in a market that maybe is not the core market, you're in a good position. But you need to make sure you leverage that strength, that a lot of people are going to give away their power and give away their value by basically having worked on popular things but continue to kind of float along in the old way. You have to be prepared to be able to, in a you know 60-second elevator pitch, explain how you brought the company money. If you worked at uh, Marvel and you were involved in, uh, in Dawn of X and some of those, those titles, then you should be ready to state that. If you're Nick Spencer 
and you brought sales to Spider-Man and you were able to continue them over a period of time, or you're Al Ewing and you're able to provide sales to the Immortal Hulk, you need to basically lead with that strength. Not just, I brought sales, but here's why and how I brought sales. Here's how I was able to take this idea and, and make this happen. Be careful of saying things like, I never expected this to be a success. Don't say things like that. Instead, the opposite. You want to say, hey, you know, I understood the characters. I understood the market. I did a video a little while back about uh, why a lot of people in the big two, they don't do market analysis. They don't say, here's who's buying my comic and here's why and here's where the, uh, the, the whole world can go. You need to be good at that. You need to be able to really clearly explain who your market is, how you're reaching it, and how you're able to grow it. There's a lot of people in the comic company who have kind of stumbled into this who have good selling books, but they may not be able to explain it well. If you're Scott Snyder and you've got death metal on, in your plate and you've been able to you know, put up pretty great sales with, uh, with, with death metal and all the rest, you need to make sure to, that you can explain why you knew pairing up with Greg Capullo and putting that art talent on the book and creating something that was easy access but still had a lot of continuity that you, you need to be able to explain your pitch. That's, that's really important that you're able to do that. A bad way to do it would be to say, oh, yeah, I've been building to this event comic for a very long time. And, you know, after 200 issues, I was able to pay it off in a big way and have a real a lot of fun and heavy metal, y'all. That, that is not going to be as successful. Don't, don't go that direction. You need to be able to say how you made money. If you are, um, if you're Kelly Sue DeConnick, and you did this Aquaman run, and it wasn't as successful as you, you hoped. The sales numbers were not as high and everything else. What you want to do is be able to say, hey, look, my specialty is being able to come into a line, being able to take what's core to the character, bring something new out of it that movie studios can then take and adapt. Play to your Captain Marvel strength. I was able to take Captain Marvel. I went on to that title. I created a few things that became you know, marketable that I was able to explain in a certain way that was able to create more value for the comic. You, you kind of almost have to hide the fact that your sales you know, work the best in the comic that you're put on because in the grand scheme of things, it's unclear how much that's going to matter anyway. What is going to matter is your ability to create money somewhere in the corporation and to point to that you understand what profit is. And I guess that's my next piece of advice is make sure you can talk profit. Make sure you can talk business. The people who can do that effectively are going to be fine. They're going to be able to pitch themselves and their ideas and rather than come with just, hey, you know what's cool? Comics. Be able to say, hey, you know what's cool is comics, particularly when you can take them and you can build a line, you can build some sustaining business, and you can offer up some IPs, and you can test out some, some projects. That's going to be powerful for you. Being unique is a benefit. There's a couple people, I think, that right now are very safe in comics who are worried about their position in comics. In many ways, the fact that they're worried indicates that they're smart enough to you know, be protecting their assets and wondering where this line is going. That's clever. It is not true that DC and Marvel are going to go and say, all we want are, you know, very vanilla, uh, you know, black and white versions of the characters. We're not just going to want, you know, Batman is Batman and Superman is Superman. And we're not just going to want these, these stereotype characters. Instead, they're going to want things that spark some imagination, bring some stories, do some, some new things. And I'll give you an example. Jonathan Hickman did some things with the Avengers that were very unusual and unique from what the Avengers typically did. You know, the ex Nilio and the, you know, the, the Black Order and a lot of these characters that showed up were, were different. They were, they, these were not, uh, the whole Infinity pitch was not a classic Avengers story by a mile. Yet, most of those ideas got adapted happily by Feige and Hollywood because they worked. So don't feel like you've got to just pitch, you know, very safe Batman. Like we're going to have Batman and what he's going to do is he's going to fight the Joker and then the Riddler is going to have some uh, riddles everywhere. And that's what we're going to do. That's not what people are looking for. What they're looking for is something new, something that catches something that you can walk into. That's going to sound exciting and fresh and brings revenue. And man, if you can, can basically point to revenue you've brought in. Basically, I've done a title that sells pretty well. You are going to be fine. You're, you're going to be just fine in that world. But you do have to be able to describe what you do. Consider this. If you have some time over the next month, come up with a pitch deck for yourself over if you could take any one property and build it into something, 
here's what you do. Here's, here's what an uh, initial comic run would look like. Here's some ways it could be merchandised. Here's some ways some other business units could possibly tie off of it. Here's where it could expand or contract if the numbers don't come in. And here's how you're going to track your audience. If you've never done one of those before, shoot me an email. I'm happy. I've, I've done a million pitch decks. I'm happy to help you with yours. Um, but regardless of that, if, if you have been in comics and you kind of knew a bunch of people in a comic store and you came in and you just uh, you got a job because you knew some buddies, yeah, it's time to stand out on your own. You have to stand on your own two feet. If you're not able to do that, you probably are in some trouble, at least in those two companies. I would, you know, take take some opportunity right now and start segueing yourself right into the indie market. You know, get that image book, get something locked in and all the rest. Just don't play the game if you don't think you can play the game well. But there's a lot of people out there who can and they're going to be fine. And it's it's uh, this is going to be an interesting period over the next two years over who kind of thrives in this environment and who doesn't. And we'll see how it all shakes out. Hey, do you disagree? You have some other advice I didn't give? Leave a comment below. Let me know your thoughts. Like, subscribe, follow me, all that stuff. Thanks for listening.